welcome all of you to this class on freedom of expression. My name is Tomás Vial, and I am a law professor at the Diego Portales Law School and a researcher at this Human Rights Center. What is freedom of expression and why it is an important right are the main questions that I will explain today. This liberty is understood as an essential part of a democratic society and for that reason has been and it is bitterly contested in every society today. In fact, it can be said that without a robust protection of this liberty, there is no democracy. In this class, I shall first refer to the sources of freedom of speech in international human rights law, as well as to which aspects are covered by it. I will also explain which types of discourse are protected and which not. Then, I will summarize the main justifications given for protecting speech freedom. After that, I will deal with the main restrictions to which freedom of expression may be subjected. Freedom of expression is guaranteed in the main human rights instruments, starting with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Both documents recognize this right in their respective Article 19. Also, the main regional human rights instruments contain a clause on freedom of expression. Concerning freedom of expression, the case law of the regional human rights courts, such as the European Court of Human Rights and the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, is very important. The content of the freedom of expression or opinion is shaped by the text of treaties and also by the case law of international human rights tribunals. Freedom of expression is understood as implying, on the one hand, both the liberty to hold opinions and impart information and ideas by any means without interference and the right to seek and to receive information and ideas. Currently, it is also understood to include the right to have access to information produced by the state, which implies that government have an obligation to provide the public information requested by any person, with some qualified exceptions. From the text of international treaties, also from international case law, it is clear that the means for communicating ideas and information are wide. They include oral, written and printed expressions, as well as non-verbal language of expression by any other means. The latter also applies currently to all forms of digital and electronic media, such as radio, television and the internet. The type of discourse that are protected are also broad. It is clear from the case law of the main human rights tribunals that the expression protected are not only the ones that are harmless. As the European Court of Human Rights said in the London case hand by the United Kingdom, it is applicable not only to information or ideas that are favorably received or regarded as inoffensive or as a matter of indifference, but also to those that offend, shock or disturb the state or any sector of the population. However, as we shall see, this broadness does not mean that all speech is protected because freedom of expression is also subject to some limitations and restrictions. Why to protect expressions that are deemed for most people as offensive or plainly wrong? The freedom of expression theory and international case law have constantly grappled with these questions. A classical rationale for protecting speech, even in cases 
where a majority of people think it should be limited or prohibited is that in order to discover the truthfulness of an assertion, immoral, religious, political or scientific matter, it is best to allow people to freely argue, criticize and debate. A second justification is that freedom of expression is essential for democracy because it allows citizens to discuss matters of public interest or to criticize the government, thus contributing to making it more accountable to citizens, to illustrate the electorate and to control the abuse of power. A third rationale is that freedom of expression is essential for human development, for people to be able to form their own ideas and to communicate with others in a sincere way. An environment free of interference and censorship is needed. Freedom of expression is also necessary for the exercise of other rights inherent to the democratic form of life, such as political participation, association and reunion. Also, a robust regime of freedom of expression is an essential tool for combating corruption, both in government and in the private sector. Finally, without freedom of expression, a free market cannot properly work, because fair competition means that both consumers and producers have access to all the relevant information in order to make the best decisions. All these reasons show why protecting freedom of expression is so important. In a word, this liberty is a necessary condition for the effective protection of human rights as a whole. However, freedom of expression is not an absolute right. As we will see in a future class on this course, there are legal grounds for imposing restrictions on certain rights, especially liberties, when they are strictly necessary for the functioning of a democratic society. They are explicitly considered in the international human rights treaties previously mentioned. In general, these limitations are justified for the protection of, firstly, the rights of others. For instance, the right to privacy, to reputation, the protection of minors, or the right to a fair trial. Secondly, national security or public order. On this basis, restriction may be imposed, for instance, on the publishing of military secrets, or for the sake of law enforcement. Another example is the regulation of speech in public spaces. Thirdly, the authority or impartiality of the judiciary. And finally, certain important social values such as public health and public morals. Nevertheless, all restrictions on freedom of expression must be necessary, proportionate and in consonance with the requirements of a democratic society. It is incumbent upon the state to demonstrate that these requirements concur. Hate speech and war propaganda are directly forbidden by international human rights law. Hate speech is the advocacy of national, racial and religious hatred that constitute incitement to discrimination hostility or violence. For hate speech to be prohibited is not, not suffice a hateful expression. It is also required the advocacy of wrongful actions against a person or a group. Freedom of expression may also be suspended or derogated in case of certain grave emergencies which threaten the security or survival of a state. Still, in such hypotheses, it is required that the suspension be authorized by law, 
that is necessary, proportionate and in consonance with the requirements of a democratic society. Though international human rights law allows certain restrictions on the freedom of speech, it looks with a strong suspicion the possibility that the state may resort to censorship. Only in very narrow cases, such as the prevention of the release of information that can produce a serious and irreversible damage to an important public interest, censorship might be justified. Even then, it may only be authorized by a judge after a fair hearing. One of the most frequent conflicts between freedom of expression and other rights is that produced with privacy and personal reputation. Privacy is generally understood as implying that there is some type of information that is under the control of the individual. Examples are medical information or information about sexual life. It is not permissible to divulge such information without the explicit authorization of the person affected. Also, speech sometimes can seriously affect reputation or the right to honor. In both circumstances, the general principle is the limitation of that speech and the imposition of some type of sanctions or remedies. However, this rule has also exceptions confirmed by international case law, such as if the information serves a public interest. For instance, when there is information on the health of an important public official, it is understood that the media has the right to inform that and the public to know it because that fact can affect the fulfillment of her or his public duties. It has also been considered that regarding public officials, politicians and people of social influence, a weaker legal protection of their reputation is justified because that allows a robust and open debate on issues of public concern, free from the threat of sanctions please visit the website mookchile.com and thank you very much.